Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So recently I've been thinking about those times when we have a high blood sugar that we just cannot explain or we just see our CGM graph slowly creeping up um, and we just don't know why. So I wanted to make a video about the kind of things that I run through in my head of the certain situations that can cause a high blood sugar that aren't just not bolusing enough for the carbs that you've eaten because let's be real, as a diabetic that's like one of many reasons why you could be high and a lot of people don't realize that it's not just as simple as carb counting so with that with that ramble out of the way let's kind of get into the things that can cause a high blood sugar that you might not think about so contrary to what i think most people think of when it comes to exercising as a type 1 diabetic a lot of people think that exercise means a low blood sugar because you're burning through glucose but actually exercising as a type 1 diabetic can be really tricky because if you do really high intensity exercise like HIIT, high intensity conditioning or a high intensity weight training session that can reduce, reduce, produce stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol which can cause a massive blood sugar spike. I do have a whole video about managing your blood sugars around different types of exercise but those three types that I just mentioned can cause a blood sugar spike which means that when you do those types of exercise you may need to have more, ins more insulin before doing them to avoid that blood sugar spike but that can also mean you are at risk of a, you're at a higher risk, oh my god I cannot speak today, you're at a higher risk of a hypo post exercise and so you'll need to either reduce your bolus insulin for your meal after eating or you'll just need to consume extra carbohydrates soon after eating to avoid plummeting straight after. But yeah, you'll kind of have to work out a routine that works for you with that one and see how your body responds to those forms of exercise and you may not need that extra insulin at all. And then the next kind of hormone related situation that can lead to high blood sugars is everyone's favorite, our period. So if you are someone who has a period, then there is likely going to be a time period during your period, during your monthly cycle where your insulin resistance increases and you may experience high blood sugars. I personally have this kind of in the middle of my cycle due to the release of progesterone. Now everyone tackles this in different ways, it depends what works for you. I personally prefer to have higher basal rates during that period when I'm having insulin resistance because I don't like having to constantly fight high blood sugars, whereas some people prefer just to have increased bolus doses and increase your insulin to carb ratios, um, but you may find that if you do that and you don't change your basal rates that you need to have kind of one or two units in the middle of the day if you haven't eaten for a while to prevent your blood sugar just creeping up by itself anyway. Um, but whatever you prefer to do, whether it's extra basal or extra bolus, um, I find something that's also really helpful is to increase your pre-bolus timings before eating. So rather than injecting 10 to 15 minutes before your meal, having 20 to 25 minutes before your meal, just to avoid those insulin spikes post meal can be really helpful when you're having that insulin resistant period. And then another hormone related reason for high blood sugars is stress. Stress as a type one diabetic can be so, so tricky because stress can push up your blood sugars, which then makes you stressed, which then pushes up your blood sugars more or, make, or makes it harder to bring them down. So finding ways that help you personally de-stress as a type one diabetic is so, so, so important whether it's meditating, breathing exercise, going for a walk, listening to some calming music, having a bath, anything that helps you de-stress is really important. I personally found that as soon as I started meditating before bed, my overnight blood sugars were not only a lot lower, but also a lot more steady and I didn't have as many spikes as I did before meditating because yeah, if I went to bed stressed, 100% I was gonna be woken up by a high alarm. Another thing is that I feel like as a type 1 diabetic, it's really easy when you have a high blood sugar to think, what have I done wrong? Um, what did I miss? But sometimes it's not you, sometimes it's the tech. And one thing to remind yourself of or consider if you're having an unexpected high blood sugar is, is my insulin pen or my insulin pump infusion site working? I think sometimes it's easy to forget about those things and blame ourselves straight away, but sometimes it is literally 
the text problem, the text fault, not yours, and you can stop blaming yourself. It's really important to do a test unit of insulin before injecting if you're using insulin pens, especially if you've put a new cartridge of insulin into your pen. Sometimes it takes a few before the kind of plunger hits the point where it's like in contact with the insulin cartridge. And so you might just literally not be injecting any insulin. Um, and I can't tell you how stressful it is when that happens, especially if it's your basal insulin and then you don't know how much insulin you've actually got on board. And it's a guessing game for the next 12 or 24 hours, depending on which insulin you're on. Something that I was not told by my diabetes team when I was diagnosed 16 years ago was that carbs aren't the only, only source of food or macronutrient that can affect your blood sugars. Protein and fats can also affect your blood sugars in big ways for some people, especially if you're having a very high protein or a very high fat meal. So if you're seeing a blood sugar spike a little bit after you've eaten, protein and fats affect your blood sugars later on because they digest a bit slower after the carbs. Um, so if you're seeing a blood sugar spike after your carbs have normally digested, could very well be protein and fats if you've had a high protein or a high fat meal. So you're going to need to work out what protein and fat ratios you need. I personally inject 40% of the fat and 30% of the protein in a meal if I'm having a high fat, high protein meal like a takeaway. And I'm gonna to link to this video, a vlog that I filmed when I had a takeaway where I go into my personal strategy very in depth. So it kind of makes sense kind of having a case study for you. Um, but yeah, 40% of fat and 30% of protein is what I use, it may be different for you. But I also, if I have a takeaway in the evening, have to increase my basal insulin overnight. And if I'm having a big takeaway, then I need to increase my basal for the next day as well, because my digestion is really, really, really slow. So yeah, increased basal and also having that extra insulin for the protein and fat. And I take that post meal, maybe like four hours post meal, because it's a slow digestive system. But yeah, I'll link that video for you where I have a case study. Something else to be wary of for us lot going into summer, and yeah, apologies if you can hear my fan throughout this whole video because it is way too hot in here, but insulin overheating is a real problem. If your insulin overheats, it will not work. It will basically just be completely ruined and you'll be injecting water. Um, so keeping your insulin as cool as possible, obviously we all know we should be storing it in the fridge, but your insulin pen, if you're out and about in the heat, keep it in the shade as much as possible or even keep it in a Frio bag if you have one of those available or just surrounding it with like ice packs if you have to, just anything to make sure it is not overheating is absolutely vital because you don't wanna be stuck on a day out, realize your insulin's off and then you have to go home to get new insulin. Like, no, keep your insulin as cold as you can to make sure it doesn't go off. Something else that can really drastically affect my blood sugars anyway, I don't know about anyone else, but for me, being sedentary all day wreaks havoc with my blood sugars and just really increases my insulin resistance. So making sure to be as active as you can throughout the day is really important. I personally find doing enough steps is the best way to manage my blood sugars. So I have a 10,000 steps a day, like not even goal, it's a non-negotiable 10,000 steps a day on my workout days um, and 11,000 on my rest days and I hit those without fail every single day, no matter if I'm working or what. If I'm in my routine, I will hit my steps because I, otherwise my insulin resistance will just be ridiculous, particularly like later on in the day, it kind of builds up and by the evening it's just impossible. So yeah, getting those steps in is really important. I will link um, again another vlog that I filmed on a working day to show you how I kind of make sure that I fit those steps in throughout the day um, around my like nine to five job and everything else that I'm doing. But if I'm kind of not in routine, like last week I had like a holiday week while I was back at my dad's in the countryside and we were just enjoying our time as a family. I had like a week off work um, and that's gonna be like my holiday of the year. Like I'm not going abroad this year, so that was holiday. I still set myself a 6,000 a day step target as a bare minimum just to help with my insulin sensitivity. Otherwise I'm gonna be miserable. Like realistically, I know if my blood sugars are stubbornly high, I'll just be constantly thinking about them, worrying about high blood sugars um, and not enjoying myself. So 6,000 6, a day minimum, it's honestly not that hard. Like it's about half an hour walk. Um, so just doing a little walk, like 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, standing up and walking around the house. It's really not hard to hit, just making sure you're hitting that as much as you can. Obviously, if walking isn't for you or if you're unable to walk, then some kind of whatever movement that you find works for your body 
please just do it and don't be completely sedentary all day. And then the cherry on top of it all, <laughs> um, the most annoying high blood sugars of all of it is illness and infection can massively increase your insulin resistance really cause some quite horrible blood sugar spikes and not even illness if you're having a certain vaccine <laughs> that we're all getting at the moment um can be really tricky for your insulin resistance um i find that i have to have at least 30 percent extra basal insulin if i don't have extra basal insulin even if i increase all of my bolus doses i will not get below 20 with my blood sugars because insulin will just be like water i have to increase my basal insulin when i'm having a vaccine or when i am ill um and yeah just finding an illness or sick day routine that works for you obviously hydration is key and yeah you kind of get the double-edged sword of the last thing i mentioned with being sedentary and please if you are ill don't try and get steps in just to help with your insulin resistance please get in bed all day and recover um but you have that as well as the actual infection pushing up your blood sugars so hydration follow the sick day rules if you're unsure on them double check with your diabetes team see what works for you but yeah increasing basal insulin is an absolute non-negotiable for me when i'm ill that is it those are kind of the main factors other than what have i eaten that can affect our blood sugars and push our blood sugars up when we're not expecting it to so if you're having a stubborn high blood sugar or a random mystery high blood sugar you can't work out why maybe one of those things are the reason and hopefully that can help you work out something to help treat it whether it's a correction dose whether it's a little walk whether it's some meditation something that can help with those horrible mystery high blood sugars but yeah i hope this video was useful for you and if not at least entertaining but yeah that is it for this one and i look forward to seeing you in the next one bye